take the first step towards online privacy. Get NordVPN. Hi, I'm joined once again by the deputy leader of the Workers' Party, Chris Williamson. Chris Williamson was a former Labour MP. He's also a peace campaigner. And we're going to be having a conversation about peace. Now, this is a follow up to a short video we did, which I'll post in the link below, which is about the domestic political scene, because Chris stood for Parliament for the Workers' Party in Derby South. But here is really um, about your commitment to peace and my commitment to peace. And I said when we finished that last video, and I think you agree with me here, that the worst thing that any government can do is the mass murder of people. You're taking people's lives, right? I think we've got to go beyond resolving disagreements and disputes through the murder of people. And that if people like Keir Starmer or Biden or Trump or Putin or Zelensky, they want to go to war, they should go to war themselves and send well, their, absolutely. send their <laughs> own bloody children spending their money, not yeah, our children, not our money. Yeah, I, I completely it. agree with you on that. And of course, uh, war is incredibly profitable, isn't it? And when the war in uh, or the special military operation, depending on your point of view, began in Ukraine, the CEOs of... Uh, weapons manufacturers like Raytheon and Lockheed Martin, BA Systems, etc. We're urging people to invest in the company. This is the time now to invest because stocks are rising, very profitable. You know, this, this is a great time to you know make money. As you say, murdering people, they didn't put it in those terms, but that's clearly what, what it means. And it's incredibly reckless and utterly amoral. Uh, and these people are psychopaths. And, you know, psychopaths who are uh, running industry, um, running commerce, psychopaths who are in in government, uh, in parliament. And that's the tragedy of it. And we have to say, no, we have to link arms and uh, and say we're not prepared to, to tolerate this. Now, regrettably, at the election, you know, another war party has been elected. Yeah. All the political parties, uh, apart from the independents, are kind of pro-war, it seems to me, that's that's been elected to parliament. Even the Green Party now is pro-NATO. And, uh, you know, NATO is... Uh, is a, a, I think, a very dangerous military alliance that really sh should have been wound up over 30 years ago when the Soviet Union collapsed. It was, its raison d'etre was supposedly to stem the threat of the Soviet Union, which was never, it was an only, it was never any threat from the Soviet Union anyway, actually. But anyway, that was that was a pretext for it. Uh, the Warsaw Pact actually uh, was uh, formed years after the uh, NATO was established, and yet. You know, I guess if you spoke to a lot of people, they would think it, it came the other way around. That you know, it was Russia that was very, you know, was posing a threat. I mean, all the kind of rhetoric that we hear about Putin now—it's absolutely absurd. Just do the body count. Uh, how many deaths are the United States responsible for? Joe Biden and his and his acolytes. You know, who uh, of which countries have they invaded over the years? Um, I mean, just—I mean, look at Iraq. I mean, a million Iraq is dead. You know, you then look at uh, you know, places like Libya, Afghanistan, and so on. <clears throat> it's it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a it's a list of devastation and destruction and misery that they've visited on countless numbers of, of people around the world. But the empire, I think, is in its in its death throes. I think you know we are seeing the emergence of a multipolar world now. The rise of the BRICS uh, is also, I think, in my opinion, a good thing. Um, but in its death throes, of course, it's incredibly dangerous. And you know this is why I think it's important that. You know, people are alerted to the danger and and do actually articulate their concern on the street and and you know and, and I know that you know there's a sort of tax campaign I think that, that you're um, familiar with of people talking about withholding their taxes although as you know I don't accept that taxes actually pay for for public uh, spending um, but it's a, but it's an interesting um, it's an interesting protest I think that uh, you know if it, if it got legs if it got momentum you know could could create some issues some some concerns and. Um, you know, for the uh, establishment. And so I think we need to be looking at all of those uh, areas to to campaign on. And when there is opportunities with by-elections, et cetera, in Parliament to, you know, get behind some of these alternative candidates who are putting forward a, a different point of view, like George Galloway did in Rochdale in February. Yes, absolutely, Chris, absolutely. And I agree with you that they don't need our tax money to pay for war. But here's... So, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, uh, in a moment, share my screen and show you some... Um, bits of UK legislation uh, and how this process works. And then I'll link to it. And then if you want, you know, if anybody's interested in this, you go check out this website. All this material is available for free. You can go and also check it on the government website as well. Um, you can find all this. 
um, the statutes anyway. So one, they don't need tax money. They can just print the money. Two, withholding tax legally and peacefully gives people the experience of actually doing something. It mitigates against our powerlessness that we're doing mm -hmm. something. Three, it means we have more pounds in our pocket for essential expenses so that instead of the government's going to go and spend three billion pounds on supporting Ukraine every bloody year, the murder of people in Ukraine, can we not resolve this peacefully? Well, they're not going to be taking care of us. Well, we'll take care of ourselves by withholding that money. And it's a protest and tax protest has a noble uh, history. The anti oh, it does, going back to, uh, you know, what Tyler and so on, you know. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So look, let me just share my screen. So this is an article from today's Zero Head. U.S.-British warplanes launch heavy retaliatory attacks on Yemen. Yemen, one of the poorest Middle East nations, and that they are spending our money to drop bombs on people in Yemen, a country that, that we're not at war with. No, this is it's despicable. Uh, and, you know, Yemen's action uh, is actually within uh, international law. There is a doctrine uh, called the responsibility to uh, protect and that's what they're applying in terms of the situation in Gaza. And I mean, and they, as you know, were, uh, <coughs> excuse me, you know, blockading uh, the, the, the sea lanes um, off their coast to, until such time as, uh, you know, Israel stops its uh, genocide in, in Gaza. Um, but we know that Britain and the United States are facilitating that genocide. I mean, you know, they should be in the Hague, the, these yeah. characters. Um, and and I mean, Chris, you know, Britain's intervened to stop an arrest a warrant against, uh, you know, the chief uh, war criminal of the day, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu. Uh, absolutely appalling behaviour. Chris, Chris, just uh, I, I do want to move this on because I'm conscious of the time, right? So forgive me. You do need to come back and we can have longer conversations, right? Yeah, of course. Which is, uh, in the background, that people, what people don't see is the massive amounts of profits. War is a racket. Oh, course, it's yeah. a massive laundromat that the money goes from Starmer's pocket and then ends back in, in the pocket of the politicians and the war profiteers. That's what's really, really happening. And, and then people spill blood, ordinary people. So let me show you this. This is from, now, if people want to find out more about this, they can go to bit.ly, which is bit dot ly slash make war history. And this is reference to statutes. It is a criminal act to give any money to any government agency directly or indirectly that's used for the purposes of genocide or terrorism. And genocide is defined in these statutes as killing members of a group, causing serious bodily or mental harm to members of a group. And the group is defined by national, ethnical, racial or religious group. So two or more people really as a group, right? Deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or in part imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group and forcibly transferring children of the group to another group. So this is the International Criminal Court Act 2001. Then there's the Terrorism Act. Section 17 states a person commits an offence if he enters into or becomes concerned in an arrangement as a result of which money or other property is made available or is to be made available to another and he knows or has reasonable cause to suspect that it will or may be used for the purposes of terrorism. And terrorism is defined in that act. <clears throat> Threat or use of firearms or explosives, endangering life for a political or ideological cause. The threat or no. use of firearms or explosives. So the Britain's actions in Yemen are violations of the Genocide Act and violations of the Terrorism Act. Mm. Now, the, the penalty for fundraising, as outlined in sections 15 to 18, I'll show you in a moment, is imprisonment for a term of up to 14 years. The Supreme Court has ruled that terrorist action outside the United Kingdom, which involves the use of firearms or explosives, resulting in danger to life is terrorism. Thus, the definition of terrorism would appear to extend to military or quasi-military activity aimed at bringing down a foreign government, even where that activity is approved officially or unofficially by the UK government. So this is the website, probityco.com, set up by an anti-war campaigner, Chris Coverdale. And uh, it lays out what the steps are and the, the legal and lawful backing for this, that the British government is breaking the law and domestic law, never mind international law, is breaking domestic law with its support for war in Ukraine, with its support for war in Israel, with its support for war in Yemen. It's breaking the law. And then by giving money to an agency that is using those funds to facilitate genocide or terrorism, I'm breaking the law. 
And the legislation makes clear that the that agents of the <laughs> government and agencies of the government are not exempt from this. Mm -hmm. This guy's come up with a system where he uses the uh, what the rich use to avoid paying taxes. So essentially what happens is download documents or one page document or one or two pages, which spells it all out, where you pay the government by trust, set up a trust, very, very simple and say, OK, provided you can prove that you're not none of this money will be used for war, terrorism or genocide, then you can have this money by such and such a date. Yeah. They can't fulfill on those conditions of the trust. So then the money goes to the next beneficiary, which could be the, the, the person who set up the trust, or it could be a charity, it could be the Workers' Party, it could be some anti-war movement. But trusts are older than common, than uh, I, they precede the 1688 Bill of Rights. It's so embedded within our legal framework. Yeah. And all they have to do is, uh, well, they can't demonstrate that they, the money won't be used no, absolutely. in violation. Well, look, I mean, you know, they've, like this? they've they've been guilty, haven't they, of of, of actually participating in uh, war crimes directly. Um, but look what happened to Julian Assange. I mean, telling the truth, pointing out that um, a government is acting outside the law can, can end up in a situation where, you know, the state uses its power against you but that should not still deter us i think from actually making uh, the case and making uh, these arguments incidentally by the way you know you, you mentioned that war is a racket there is a, a wonderful book written i think in 1935 by smedley yeah. butler yeah uh who um was a former u.s uh, general and he said in his in entire time you know he was effectively a hired hoodlum for uh, the uh, for wall street i mean that's how he kind of summed up his his, his career you know he did no good he was he was just a hired thug you know a goon for for um, you know, U.S. corporate capitalism, and nothing's changed. I mean, it's just as it's just the same today. And uh, I can highly recommend that book if any people haven't read it. Well, I say it's more of a pamphlet than a book. It's only very very short, but he but he makes some very very powerful and pertinent points in it. Okay, well, um, I'll have the, thank you. I'll have the link to the book in the description below. I mean, if people want to find out more, I'll link to some of the videos. I'll link to the website, and people can do that more about this. There is more to go into, but I wanted to get the word out to you. Chris, because there are people who are going to do this. You know, the bottom line is people can test it. If it doesn't work out, you can always cough up at the end. But along the way, it gums up the, the system. Mm. And it's a message that, look, no, this is not OK. And tax revolt does have a history of success. And taxes were set up because the elites, imperial elites, wanted to wage war. We, you mm. and I we don't want war. We just want to get on with our lives peacefully. Yeah, absolutely. As the, you know, the 99 percent of the population do. Yeah, uh, actually, um, you know, but but you know, a lot of people get conned and uh, into you know supporting these uh, warmongering uh, parties, and uh, you know, the British Empire. I often make this point uh, was very successful, probably the most successful empire in, in the world, and it, and it ex excelled at divide and rule. That's how they managed to hold sway for so long. And those same tactics are are used by the establishment today. And you know, it's not your neighbour, as Jimmy Dore always makes the point on his uh, podcast. Is you know, my enemy is not my neighbour. Uh, my enemy is, is the people at the top of society. And it's, it's something I always say to people on the doorstep when I'm canvassing if they ever complain about migration and so on, that, uh, look, the reality is that you've got more in common, actually, with migrants, with asylum seekers than you have with the people at the top of society because they're the people that are exploiting us in this country. That, they're the people that's actually led us into a situation where 14 and a half million people in Britain in the sixth biggest economy in the world are living in poverty, where our, you know, our industries have been destroyed. Uh, on the altar of uh, globalization um, and the people that are often seeking uh, you know, refuge here are, are doing so because they're fleeing war or they're fleeing ruthless exploitation by the same global corporations that uh, are exploiting us. I mean, you know, one of the points that we made in our manifesto, we know that people have got a concern about about uh, immigration in this country. I think all that's driven by um, you know the media and so on and, and, and by people's, I suppose, experiences of, of actually, you know, struggling. And it's an easy... Um, Scapegoat, isn't it, to talk about, oh, it's all the migrants' fault. And this is where I think, you know, reform, obviously, and the Workers' Party, but, you know, part uh, company. Our prospectus is to say, let's stop the reason why people are seeking refuge in, in, in the first place 
uh, let's, you know, folks like China does actually, you know, on benevolent economic uh, sort of uh, developments uh, around the world. I mean, their intervention, they don't use the gumbo, gumbo diplomacy, you know, they use economic uh, investment in, in developing countries. Yeah, there's a quid pro quo, they want, you know, raw materials, et cetera, but they build infrastructure and so on. And that's the kind of thing I think that we should be uh, uh, doing. That's the sort of a model, I think, that we should be embracing as, as uh, in terms of uh, foreign policy. But, um, you know, unfortunately, it's, it's the old you know, um, 19th, well, 18th, 19th century gumbo diplomacy that, that still holds yeah. sway uh, today. And uh, we need to, you know, rail against that. And as I say, you know, I think when people are exposed to those sorts of, uh, of arguments that, you know, it's not the migrants that are at fault, it's, it's the people at the top of society. And of course, the final thing I'll just say on this, of course, is that, you know, when we are bringing people into Britain, highly skilled people, you know, good luck to them, I mean, nothing against that, um, but it's denuding their, their home countries of those skill sets, isn't it? And, uh, you know, wouldn't it be better if we could kind of create a world where, you know, we kind of sort of mutually support each other and, uh, you know, we help economic development in, in different uh, countries. You know, we can all actually get along quite well if we if we were to to do that. There would be no need for war. If we had, a, you know, a fairer distribution of, of, of wealth and, and so on in the world, then we would have no poverty. Yeah. Which could certainly, if I mean, in Britain, with a different economic prospectus, we could eliminate poverty. You know, if we could elect people who, who actually had that as a clear uh, uh, sort of political priority in the sixth biggest economy in the world, we could eliminate poverty, eliminate homelessness. We could have a good society. We could actually get to the sort of society that John Maynard Keynes was talking about back in 1930 when he said, my grandchildren's generation will only be working 15 hours a week because of the march of new technology. And now new technology has come, of course, but it's not benefits of it. It's not it should be distributed to ordinary working people. Uh, they've been accreted to the to the elites in in society, and and that's a sort of you know thing we need to be alerting people to that this is all a political choice. We're not short of money, you know. We're not short of, of kind of know how, as it were. It's a political choice to continue with austerity. It's a political choice to leave people on the waiting list for 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 you know months on end uh, for for important uh, serious uh, medical treatments. It's a political choice to leave people having to sleep rough or, or struggling to put food on the table, struggling to pay their uh, mortgages. It's a political choice to force people to pay for tuition fees to go to uh, university. So, no, you know, it's a political choice to say you can't retire until you're 68 now. Is it 67, 68? It's going up every every uh, every sort of decade or so because we can't afford to pay people a decent pension. It's absolute nonsense. We've got the it's, it's, most miserly pension anywhere in Western Europe. It's bloody it's, ridiculous. It's a political choice to spend the money on killing people abroad. Yes, taking care Absolutely. of people. Absolutely. Which is yes. what which is what the Workers' Party stands for, and which is what I stand for, and which is you know by engaging in legal, peaceful tax protests, and I invite people to go and find out. I'll link to it in the description below. They can explore this further. Chris, I would love to have you talk to back on at some point. Two no twenty-minute videos is not enough. It's not enough, right? <laughs> really, really appreciate you taking the time. No worries, mate. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for inviting us, mate. And it I'm might be enough for the people uh, listening, though. Actually, twenty minutes. <laughs> <laughs> they might think it's, it's too bloody long. But anyway, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we can talk for a long time. Yeah, but we, yeah, can, we can indeed. Thanks Please. for uh, inviting us. Anyway, appreciate it. Enjoy Absolutely talking. welcome. Please subscribe, share, spread the word. Um, take a look at propertyco.com and fill your pockets with peace, love, and freedom. This is Chris and Rich signing out. All the best. Bye-bye. All the best. Cheers. Bye.